Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, on this episode of The Bullet Points this morning, I'm going to be honest. I'm about to cover something that I don't want to cover. I don't want to have to make this video because, quite honestly, this is this is beyond the pale. This is not acceptable for any human behavior, at least in my opinion. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments field below. One request that I ask is keep it as cool as you can because this is going to invoke an emotional reaction. Now, what I'm going to talk about tonight is or this morning is there's actually articles in the main left side of the aisle debating whether you should show images of, quote, slaughtered children in order to evoke an emotional reaction to really go beyond thoughts and prayers. This is, this is one of those things that takes the cake beyond anything that I can even imagine. And when you put this level of an idea out on the table in order to achieve your goals, I seriously question exactly what your motivations are. And I want to show you this is who we're fighting day in and day out, and this should give you some energy to get it done. All right, everything is linked in the description box below. Let me know what you guys think, and oh, let's dive into it. I almost, oh, I don't want to do this. Okay, let's get it. Debate emerges on showing graphic photos of gun violence. Oh, is debate emerging? I wonder who's debating that and introducing that. Well, let's dive in. The mass situations in all of these towns beyond have, excuse me, and beyond have touched off a familiar yet fraught debate over whether the news media and the authorities should publish graphic photos of the victims, with some saying it's time to show Americans an unvarnished picture of the violence. Okay. On a basic human level, how do you get past your filter in your brain on this? That's just my question. The left and the media and the gun controllers really like to paint all gun owners, everyone who, who takes part in the Second Amendment, anyone who cherishes that right to pass it on to our next generation as it was passed on to us, as a terrible person, no emotion, no feeling, don't care, it's our fault, they hope it happens to us, all of these terrible, beyond the pale statements, and yet we're the bad people. And I, the only reason that I'm bringing this, I'm not trying to make it an us versus them thing, what I'm, the reason I'm bringing this up is because this is the idea that they're actually coming at us with. Let's keep going, because this is, oh. The argument in favor of showing photos of gun violence that, that kills all the people that have killed seemed to turn largely on the idea that it will galvanize action on new restrictions on firearms by mobilizing public opinion. Okay, you are willing to dishonor the memory of those victims who have been, who are targeted and have no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm losing my words. Um, they are completely innocent. You're going to then further victimize the family by publishing those photos in order to achieve your political means. Yeah, I've got some questions about you, legitimately, and you're the one that wants to take our rights and says that you know better and you'll take care of us? Um, I've already questioned you on the rights level. Now I'm questioning you on a, who needs red flag laws? Just saying. Okay, let's keep going. David Boardman the dean of Temple University's journalism school and a former executive editor of the Seattle Times, recently came out in favor of publishing, albeit with an important caveat, that news outlets secure the permission of the surviving parent. You know, there's certain things that used to be a thing between humans where you wouldn't ask incredibly offensive questions because you knew it was just wrong. Well, that's gone out the window because the needs of the, po the political impetus in the, the political movement supersede any kind of uh, um, ethical, moral obligation because we really want gun control. Whew, let's keep going. I'm going to show you the actual tweet. Agree. Couldn't have imagined saying this years ago, but it's time, with the permission of a surviving parent, to show what a slaughtered seven-year-old looks like. Maybe only then will we find the courage for more than thoughts and prayers. Okay. This individual is putting the bullet point of more than thoughts and prayers on releasing photos of innocent children who have been murdered to further their political means and ends. Well, it's not working because those pesky rights and those pesky constitutionalists, man, that right really gets in the way. So we should probably up the emotional response by publishing and dishonoring the memory of those victims by showing them. Okay. Let's take legal, or it's not legal, let's take ethical and moral questions. Let's put it over here for a second. Let's put a pin in that. You want to expose all the other children of this nation, all the other adults, the teenagers, 
every single person to these types of graphic images because it would further your political means and not even not even taking into consideration the disrespect of the individual victims, the disrespect of those that are innocent and don't need to see these types of things. But no, no, you want your political points. As you can see, I'm getting a little amped. Let's show you what CNN, Jake Tapper said. There are images of these shootings that law enforcement and frankly we in the news media that we don't share with you because they're so horrific. They're so awful. Okay, you're at a pretty good point there. But maybe we should and you're out the window. Maybe the shock to the system would prompt our leaders to figure out how to make sure society can stop these troubled men, and it's mostly always men, from obtaining these weapons used to slaughter our children. Okay, so just a quick question. Releasing and doing these, this, this is the worst idea on, I've ever heard. So in doing that, you think that that's going to change the outcome? No, it's not going to change the outcome. What it's going to do is wound and harm more people, not to mention disrespect the victims and their families. But you don't care about that. Because everything is politics and control. And that, I pray to God these people never get it. On The Late Show with Stephen Colbert Monday night, Tapper said he wasn't pushing for images that family members don't want out there, but criticized sanitizing news coverage and asked, who are we protecting by not publishing more graphic information? The entire rest of the population of the United States. <sighs> okay, let's go one more. And now Washington Post decided to put this part in here. But there are ethical concerns. No, stop. What do you mean? There are logistical and ethical concerns. Indoor crime scenes are shut to photojournalists. Well, there's the logistical. Police often keep official photographs under wraps for months, even years. Facing bereaved parents, editors have to weigh the news value of photos against the morality of asking devastated people to share horrible photos of their loved ones at a time when they may not be thinking clearly. That, that statement pretty much speaks for itself. There is actually a real debate on this. If you take nothing out of this video, understand that these are the people that are telling you, you don't know anything, you're a terrible person, it's all on you that these things happen, and yet they are advocating for this, for their own political means and gains. Hmm. Woo! <sighs> And that's what I have for you guys tonight, this morning. Let me know what you guys think in the comments field, and I'll see you tonight at the 9 p.m. segment. I'm Braden. See you later.